Harlem Sonny Larry. Didn't you? And he used to be the best of friends. We're still the best of friends. No, you're not. Who says we're not? Sit somewhere else. Martin, how are you doing today? Good, Roy, how are you? Really, really good. Such a pleasure to talk to you again. Me too. Was Happy anniversary. Th thank you very much. <laughs> was this always the movie you wanted to do, to do next with Brendan and Colin? Or was there any iteration where this didn't involve those two actors? Um, it, it, th this story couldn't have been any other two actors, um, but I only kind of came up with a good version of this script three years ago. So since it, three billboards, you know, something else could have happened or some other story could have come up. I, it, in my heart, I was kind of feeling like I, I, I'd like to get the boys back together. I've had that feeling since in Bruges, I guess, so that's 14 years ago. Um, but um, the ease of working with them and how brilliant they are um, is kind of what I wanted to tap into. But it had to be with a good script. So three three years ago, I came up with one and was happy with it. So we set the ball rolling then. This one so far, from my perspective, is getting an even better response. So now you've got to do, maybe in the year 2036, <laughs> tap out this trilogy. Sugar, OK. <laughs> I like that challenge, and I like that so far away. <laughs> the boys don't like that it would be so far away. Like, we can't both can't believe that it, all three of us can't believe that uh, it's 14 years has gone since in Bruges. It literally feels like yesterday. But part of, like, the making of this, we didn't want to, for instance, disappoint an in Bruges fans, and there are lots of those and very very eager, very, uh, um, a lot of Bruce friends were really into it because it's, it's one of those films that was kind of a cult and you kind of discovered it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we like, but we didn't want to disappoint anyone, but we wanted to take them into a stranger, sadder, more, hopefully still funny, but a, a stranger place than in Bruges. And it feels like right now, it feels like we've achieved that. There's, there's one line of dialogue that Barry delivers, and I think it might be the saddest single line of dialogue I've ever heard. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but he's by the lake. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite dialogue, saddest line, the, too. The, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I was uh, sh properly shook by it. So when you come up with lines like that, do you can you feel in the moment you're like, yeah. Well, ones like that, and I think it's the one, the one you're talking about. Did you going with tea or something? I'll, I'll spoil it for you afterwards. Okay, but it's, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I think some, it, when writing goes at its best and when you're being most truthful, you tap into your own insecurities or the saddest places you've been in. And I've had that thought and those feelings uh, in the same way that that character does. So that's sort of all me in that moment. Oh. It's happened to me too. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a sadder even still. <laughs> Good. For me, the, the biggest takeaway I took from it is that when creating something, anything, you have to be quite selfish. You have to sacrifice a lot. And sometimes it's just having fun in order to be creative, in order to be artistic. Uh, do you think that's like a fair kind of takeaway from this? I think it is and it isn't. I think th there's a selfishness of time, like you do have to carve out time, um, but I don't think you have to be as selfish or, or mean or a person, or a person even in, in turmoil necessarily. I don't think you need turmoil to write a story about turmoil, or be in a bleak p place to write a story about bleakness. So, so definitely, I think as a writer, you didn't need to, to, to protect time and headspace. But, um, but Brendan's character in this goes like to the nth extreme in, in that regard. I wouldn't subscribe to that necessarily. I don't think you have to be that cruel or harsh to come up with something good. Literally self-destructive. Yeah, yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, for yourself, as when it comes to the writing part of it, uh, I, not to like op oversimplify this at all, but I know there are kind of two schools of writers. There's writers who know exactly everything that they want, they've got it in their heads, and they, it comes out on the page. Or, or absolutely nothing in their heads. And they, f <laughs> and they follow kind of where the story goes. So yeah. would you... To totally, the, the latter, yeah, yeah. I literally, at the start of a, a, of a film script or a play even, I don't know what's going to happen. I maybe have one or two characters or a sense of what their characters might be. But I know absolutely nothing. For instance, in this, like 20 pages in, uh, and it's in the trailer, so it's not really a spoiler, Brendan comes into the pub and says, unless you don't talk to me anymore, I'm going to start cutting my fingers off. 
And I was shocked <laughs> when he said that. So that I think hopefully why an audience is shocked too is it's like, where the hell is that? What? That's a bit going a bit far. <laughs> um, but but it was a shock to me. So I, and I love that. If, I think if you plot everything out from the start, you're never really surprised by twists and turns like that. Do you have any particular uh, pieces of advice for maybe wannabe writers out there? Um, oh, it goes back to the selfish thing, but time, just like, you've got to keep doing it and you've got to put the work in and you've got to um, be, be honest with yourself, both about that and how good it is or how... I, I think if you keep doing it uh, over and over again, it will get better and you've got to hang on to that, I think. And just one final question, if that's okay. So 14 years since In Bruges, and it was, as you mentioned, like it was quite popular. Um, it's off the back of billboards, which, you know, won so many awards and got so much attention on it. Has Hollywood not come knocking for a, a big, big, big project? Or is that just something you're not interested in? I'm just not interested in, like, I, I kind of have a, a wall that my agents put up between <laughs> most of, I'll only write and direct my own things. I'll only, you know, direct my own scripts. So, so scripts don't come in. They know I don't like superhero movies, so that's never going to be even an offer or, 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 or a discussion. Um, so, so no, I'm, and also I'm very lazy, so like, that would be, <laughs> <laughs> one film every five years um, is plenty for me. Is there, is there any, say, particular genre that you haven't tackled that you're like, I, I think I might have that in me though. I, do, I, I feel like I'm getting less and less sort of genre based. Like I love in Bruges, but even that was, it was, no, I, I wouldn't say anything about it. But I like that this almost doesn't have a genre, obviously a dark comedy, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really have a plot as much as, as any of the others. And I kind of like that to be more and more character based and leave, leave room for humanity a little bit more. I mean, in, in Bruges had a lot of humanity too, I think, and Three Billboards too, but just even less plot. I mean, you discover new things with each film, but I've discovered on this, like having less has, has meant there's more to it. Fantastic. Martin, thank you so Thanks much. Great. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. Can't be waiting around for any more of this madness. Let's just call it quits. We won't call it quits. We'll call it the start. <laughs>